Hey, it's your guy Tyrell back with the interviews. In today's video, we're going to analyze Czech Republic international Patrick Schick to determine whether he would be the ideal summer signing for Mikel Arteta's arsenal. So in today's video, first we're going to analyze Schick's role at Leverkusen up front, and then we'll focus on his strengths and weaknesses to see if he would be a good fit at the Emirates. So when we break it all down and we do look at the board, we have Bayer Leverkusen in a 4-2-3-1, and this is the default shape that we witness Patrick Schick operate in for both club and country. There can be slight tactical adjustments, whether we see them playing a 4-3-2-1, a 4-1-4-1, a 4-3-3, or even when you see the side shift into more of a three-man back line. But Schick's role doesn't really change, and he often does have two supporting players that are direct runners just in behind him or out in the wider areas. So when you focus on Schick in general, his role is pretty simple, and he operates as a legitimate all-rounder. So with that being said, first when we look at Schick, he's capable of dropping off deeper to serve as an outlet for his teammates and that's something that we do witness from Lacazette at Arsenal. If he drops off and there's no pressure on him he's capable of linking play well with his feet. You could see him playing balls into teammates in that midfield zone or looking to spread the ball out into wider areas. Initially we witnessed Schick dropping off into a pocket of space between the lines and he's looking to receive the ball from the center back in that zone. When that pass is played rather than turning to run at the opposing side's back line, Line, Schick looks to play a first time ball in towards his teammate dropping into an inside left position. Now as that play develops, Schick looks to carry his movement forward and he's running off a marker into the gap between the center back and the fullback and that's where he receives the return pass and from that position he could be looking to play the ball in between the fullback and the center back as the fullback is ball watching and not tracking his marker but he looks to carry the ball backwards and he pulls two players towards him and that's where he locates his initial layoff teammate running off his marker so from there Schick is capable of taking three players out of the game because he doesn't play that pass first time and here he squares the ball in towards his teammate to help Leverkusen progress their play. If we look to another example it's Schick running off a center back to break and transition in a 1v1 and he's simply relying on his teammate to play a pass to bypass two of the opposing sides players to play him free. However the pass is short and Schick is forced to carry the ball backwards but he locates his teammate making a run off of him and from there he has time and space to look up because now the center back has to retreat to track that movement and Schick slides the ball out to his teammate to help Leverkusen progress their play. He could also do that with his back to goal around the final third when there is pressure applied and also he's capable of doing that with his feet linking play and inviting pressure towards him to drag defenders out of position. The only real issue that we witnessed with Schick in those situations is that if the opposing side is able to get numbers around him when he's looking to receive that ball ahead of pressure, then they're able to converge, swarm him, and outnumber him in that zone to win the ball. In this example here, you witness Schick dropping off the opposing side center backs to receive the ball. And what you end up seeing here is that there are three young boys players around him. So when that pass is played in towards him, you can see that he's looking to turn central, and perhaps he's looking to back heel the ball in towards the initial passer who's making a run into right half space however he turns into traffic and because he's forced to hold off two center backs another player is able to step in from behind to apply recovery pressure and you can see that there are four players around Schick in that moment and from there he's now unable to link play with his teammates and he's simply crowded out and that's the end of the attack in this example a ball is punted in towards Schick in the opposing side's penalty area and he does well to chest the ball down with his first touch but as you can see there are already three opposing defenders around him so when he's looking to control it off the bounce again there's no support around him unless he lays the ball off instantly and he doesn't do that so that's Schick's mistake and when he looks to turn central he simply closed out by three defenders and that again halts another Leverkusen attack. With that being said not only is he capable of linking play with his feet if you leave him to drop off deeper with space he's able to chest the ball down and that gives his back line and his goalkeeper an option to play long balls into Schick and from there if they don't apply tight pressure he's capable of chesting it down into his teammates and even when we see tight pressure being applied towards him he's capable of serving as an outlet to get his midfielders and the wide players involved. If we look to an example a ball is punted in towards Schick who drops off the back four to chest it down at the halfway line and as you can see here there's no pressure around him so he has time to bring the ball down and when pressure is applied he has two options 
options just in behind him to lay the ball off to. And in that situation, what you see from Schick is that he flicks the ball over that pressure in towards his teammate to help Leverkusen retain possession. And if we look to another example, this time it's Schick chesting the ball down ahead of pressure. And you can see that he has support to his right as the opposing side has markers just in behind him for the layoff. What Schick does well here is that he holds off the center back who instantly applies pressure once he does receive it with his chest. And you can see that there's help pressure towards his right. What Schick does well here is that rather than turning towards the central area, he shifts out to the wider area and it gives him space to hold off the center back and then lay the ball off in towards the wide player rather than looking to take on the center back. And that helps Bayer Leverkusen retain possession. And then the other aspect to his game with his back to goal is that he can also serve as a legitimate aerial threat when he does look to occupy defenders. You could play balls in towards him and he's capable of nodding it down in towards his teammates. The other alternative there is that he nods the ball upwards to gain control of the ball and shield out the opposing defender. And from there, he can link play as well. And the other key trait to his game is that he's capable of taking two markers out of the game by flicking the ball beyond them to get runners in behind to serve as a legitimate goal threat in the final third. And if that isn't the case, if they're not a legitimate goal threat, then they will help Bayer Leverkusen progress the play. Following a goalkeeper punch, you witness Schick taking two defenders out of the game and flicking it on into the path of Gray, who's unmarked. And Schick's presence takes away Gray's marker, which allows him to flick the ball in towards his teammate to break free on goal. From here, Gray could square the ball in towards his teammate to place him in a 1v1, but he locates that there could be pressure off his shoulder, so he looks to carry the ball into left half space, and as that play develops, Gray's in a 1v1 with the goalkeeper, and he should be bending his effort in towards the far post, but from this position, he somehow guides his effort wide of the net. From a Leverkusen clearance against Dortmund, you can see that Schick does well to evade the center back who was looking to step tight towards him, and he controls the ball on his head ahead of two Dortmund defenders. From there, Schick carries the ball down at the halfway line. The defenders are forced to retreat and he can slide the ball out to his wide option. However, he opts not to do that, and the reason why he does that is to allow the wide player to make a bending outside in run, and from there he's able to slide the ball in towards his teammate to carry the ball into right half space. The final threat that Patrick Schick does offer with his back to goal in the final third is that he serves as a reference point for the players in behind him, and what he could do is that he could drag defenders towards him, occupy their pressure, and then when balls are played in towards him, he could serve as a reference point to place his teammates into legitimate goal scoring positions. Here we witness Schick looking to make a lateral run across the box to drag away a center back and his midfield teammates looking to play the ball in towards him. When that pass is played, Schick is closed down by two defenders, but he locates the movement of Demer Bay making a run towards the penalty area. Schick does well to hold off the center back and as that play develops, he simply controls it freely as no pressure steps towards him when he brings the ball down and he simply opts to lay the ball off in towards his midfield team teammate who controls the ball freely and then looks to switch play out to the right hand side. In this example you could see that Schick is looking to make a run off the ball watching center back into right half space but that would involve his teammate taking three players out of the game with his vertical pass. However unfortunately for Schick that pass is a bit short and as you could see when he receives the ball towards his feet he's closed down by four of the opposing side's players. What he does well here is that he anticipates cover pressure from the midfielder so he takes a touch centrally to take him out of the game and from there he locates a wide player making a run central as well. That opens up a passing lane for any wide Leverkusen players looking to make a run into left half space and as you can see Schick is closed down by five of the opposing side's players. Schick again carries the ball on his left foot and from there due to the movement from the wide player on the left he's able to slide the ball into left half space to place his teammate in a legitimate goal scoring position. With that being said Schick could also operate as a legitimate threat between the lines. His movement from those deeper positions can get him into dangerous positions if he does follow the play and there's no one tracking his movement. And he can simply pick up the ball from deeper positions and carry it forward to attempt to get a shot on goal. In terms of his general movement, he is capable of making runs in towards the channels to receive the ball and help retain possession, but he's also capable of making those runs in between the center back and the fullback gaps to drag defenders out of the game, and the same could be said if he makes those runs in between the center back gap 
to pull those defenders out of position and help create space for his teammates breaking into the final third. Likewise, while we don't see it often, he is also capable of making those runs in between the center backs off the last shoulder to break into 1v1 situations or making angled runs in towards the half space to get himself into a shooting position. Initially, we witness a Leverkusen break with Verts on the ball and he locates Schick making a run in between the two center backs to break in behind. He slides the ball into the path of Schick and rather than taking a touch, Schick lets the ball roll across his body. The right center back can't make a challenge and he locates that the goalkeeper is rooted. So Schick looks up to locate the goalkeeper's positioning and by the time the keeper does look to step off his line quickly, Schick is in a position where he's already locating where he's going to place the ball and he simply fires a first time effort beyond the keeper. In this example, you witness Virch receiving the ball between the lines from a midfielder and focus on Schick's positional swap with Diaby as he's in a right channel position. As that play develops, you witness Verts pulling out the center back, and from here Schick can make a run off the narrow ball watching left back, or simply look to drift laterally. What he does well here is that he doesn't make that run that you would expect him to into the right channel, and as Verts carries the ball forward, you can see that Schick is now looking to make a run across the ball watching left back, and Verts simply has to put his head up to track that movement. What helps Verts here is that the center back is pulled out of position because he was able to retain the ball, and the ball watching left back doesn't track the movement of Schick, so when Vert splits the left back and the center back, now Schick can make a run into right half space, and while the center back does a good job of tracking his movement desperately, Schick does a very good job of using his body to hold off that challenge, and finishing first time superbly at the far post. And then if he is playing with another striker, or a player that's drifting into central areas, he's capable of occupying defenders and using his presence to drag them out of position to create space for runners in behind or it simply helps him get into positions where he can occupy defender and then use his aerial presence or his physical strength to tower over them or back them into positions where he can link play for his teammates or simply retain possession and to add on to that his physical presence in those central areas can serve as a decoy as like i said he's capable of dragging defenders out of position and using his strength to take them out of the game so runners could break him behind, or simply step towards the ball and dummy it to get teammates into advanced positions. Here we see Virch receiving the ball ahead of the halfway circle in a deeper central midfield position, and focus on the movement of Diaby and Schick making runs across the center backs. As that play develops, Virch's long ball witnesses Schick take both center backs out of the game with simply his presence, and you can see that Diaby continued his movement in beyond, and Schick's presence takes those center backs out of the game to place Diaby in a legitimate goal scoring position, where he can now go 1v1 with the goalkeeper who simply isn't off his line. As that play continues, you could see that with the goalkeeper coming off his line, Diaby simply could clip the ball over him, and from that, due to Schick's presence, Diaby's now in a position where he could simply flick the ball over the goalkeeper to help Leverkusen equalize the game. So in terms of goals, Schick was the joint leader at Euros with Cristiano Ronaldo, and then in the Bundesliga is averaging a goal a game with 20 goals and 20 appearances. When you break down the manner in which he does score these goals, yes, his movement in the penalty area is very good and in transitional play and when he's making runs in towards the penalty area, he does serve as an outlet. What we do notice about Schick is that when he gets into the final third, he roughly only needs one at most two touches to get himself into a legitimate goal scoring position. And that's a great trait to have for a striker. In many scenarios, he's capable of getting himself and his body adjusted into a great goal scoring position. And he simply only needs one sweeping touch to beat the goalkeeper. Against Denmark, he witnessed Czech Republic chasing the game with the front two and as a cross is looking to come in from the right channel focus on Schick's positioning he's ahead of the center backs and when that ball is played the center backs are looking to retreat towards a six yard area but he halts his run and he opens up his body so that when that cross is played towards his feet he can simply sweep it first time across the keeper in that same tournament against Holland you witness a Czech Republic break and in left half space you can see the ball is set for a pullback and focus on Schick's initial positioning he's making a late run into the penalty area and he's not tracked so when that ball is played back across Dumfries and Blind Schick simply gets the ball ahead of Blind and sweeps it first time towards the front post and he beats the keeper and then the one final trait that shouldn't go unnoticed is Schick's aerial threat in the final third Arsenal currently lack that threat in the penalty area as you do see their wide players often getting crosses into the box so there be the fullbacks or Saka and Martinelli
Valley, and there's often no presence in and around the six yard area to pose a legitimate goal scoring threat. With Schick, what's interesting is that he often positions himself in and around that zone, and while there can be several defending players around him, he's still capable of getting himself into a good position where he isolates the defender to serve as a legitimate threat in and around that box, and in most situations, he often scores. In this example, you witness Leverkusen having a 2v2 with a player making an underlapping run into right half space, and focus on Schick's positioning ahead of two defenders. When that delivery is played in towards the six yard area, Schick makes his run from the back post across that initial marker, and then he makes the run ahead of the center back and simply towers over him to not an effort on goal that does force the keeper into a save. If you look to one final example, it's a ball from the left channel in towards Schick around four opposing defenders, and when that ball is played, he simply makes a lateral run and towers over the center back ahead of the six yard area, and he nods a first time effort on goal that forces a keeper into a difficult save. So as you can see, Patrick Schick possesses the traits in a striker that Arsenal currently lack, and his all round threat in the final third justifies why he should be a legitimate option for Mikel Arteta if Schick's looking for a move abroad.